Assalamu alaikum everyone, uh, just making sure nobody needs a break, everybody's ready for the lecture. Okay, great. Uh, good afternoon everyone, my name is Abdurrahman Abu Al-Shahar, I'm a second year medical student. And uh, for today's lecture, we're going to be talking about joints. I believe you took the first lecture with Dr. Safan yesterday, and uh, it was the introduction to anatomy, right? So just to go through quickly, one or two minutes, because uh, some of the points that he explained yesterday, they are very much connected and correlated to today's lecture. So one of the things that he mentioned yesterday was the types of bones, if you remember morphologically. Long, short, anybody can continue? Sesamoid, flat, erect, okay, great. And um, the, he went into the detail of a long bone, how it's composed of a diaphysis, and two epiphyses and metaphyses and in children there is something called epiphyseal plate and it's only present in children so the, we will see that and one more thing was medical terms anterior posterior you remember everything so you won't be, he be hearing me today saying upper lower you will hear me say superior inferior etc actually one term that just comes to mind i had difficulty when I was in your level studying was the anterior posterior also means ventral dorsal if you remember so um, the, an easy way to memorize it uh, here's a simple technique actually anterior starts with an A flip the A it's V so anterior A for anterior V for ventral same meaning same thing posterior but make it small p so small p flip it it's small d p for posterior same meaning d for dorsal it's a simple technique if you want to use it okay if you don't then also okay. So without further ado, if you have any questions or inquiries after the lecture, feel free to send me an email. Let's begin. Today's objectives for uh, the joints lecture are going to be the following. We're going to be discussing the concept and defining what's a joint or an articulation, you name it, mufsal, that's the meaning. Okay. And then we're going to be talking about the functions of joints in our body. And then we're going to be just classifying joints. They're either structural classification or functional classification, okay? So let's begin. Definition of a joint. What is a joint? Okay, very simply put, a joint is the point of connection between two bones or more to allow the skeleton to give us mobility. As you can see in here, point of connection between two bones or more, especially if it allows motion, mobility, movement, you name it. Okay, clear? Okay, great. So now we're going to be talking about the functions of joints, and that's actually a question for you. Just looking at what I'm doing right now with my elbow, the elbow joint, the shoulder, what's the main function? Movement. Great. So allowing movement, and the second function is holding the skeleton together. So very basic information so far. Let's get into the actual lecture and classifying the joints. So classification of joints. We have two classifications, structural and functional. And when you mention functional, we mean according to the freedom of movement, like we said, because the main function is movement. So now we're going to look at the structural classification. They are three. The first one is called fibrous. The second one is cartilaginous. And the last one is synovial. Now, if you're asking about the definition of each from its name, each and every single one, very simple definition. Fibrous means that it's a type of joint that is joined by fibrous tissue. Cartilaginous, a type of joint that is joined by cartilage. And synovial, a type of joint that is joined by synovial fluid. And you will see what synovial fluid is when I get into the slides. Now, functionally, there are three. They are either, look at the movement, completely free, right? Freely movable or slightly movable, and you will see why I'm pointing out, or completely immovable. So very simple, but unfortunately, of course, they have medical terms. And the medical terms are the following. The freely movable is diarthrosis. The completely immovable is sine arthrosis, and between them is amphi. Remember, arthrosis, arthrosis, arthrosis. Di, sine, and amphi between them. Okay? Any questions so far? Any questions? No? Okay, great. So 
fibrous joints, let's begin with. What are fibrous joints? A type of joint that is joined by fibrous tissue. Functionally, what is it? It is sine arthrosis, meaning there is no movement at all. And if there is, it's very little. Okay? So I want you to look at this histological slide. The main characteristic about fibrous tissue is that there is collision fibri. By the way, don't let the word fibri confuse you. Fibri is in British English. Fiber is American English. It's the same thing. Okay? So collision fiber. That's the main, uh, the, uh, the main unique characteristic in a histologic image. Now, we also have subtypes of fibrous, tissue, uh, of fibrous joints. Sorry. And the, the subtypes are the following. There are three. Number one is sutures. Does anybody know what sutures are? Can anybody help me here? Yes, you sir? Yes, found in the skull. Because in some books, that's why I asked the types of bones. In some books, there's also a sixth type, which is called sutures. And sutural bones are only found in the skull. And the second type is called syndesmosis, and the last one is called gomphosis. Okay? And let's go into deep detail of each and every single one of them. So the first one is fibrous joint sutures. So like we said, the example is found at the skull. Now, the main characteristic about this joint is that this fuses with age and ossifies with age. That's why they tell you not to hold a newborn from, its head, uh, from his head because, you know, you would just squeeze it. Bad things would happen. Um, so as I said, they allow for growth, they fuse with age, and they ossify. And the example is bones of the skull from its name, sutures, sutural bones, sutural joints. Very simple so far. Questions? Okay, great. So... Now the second subtype, which is syndesmosis. Syndesmosis uh, fibrous joints, don't let the name make it seem it hard to you. Here's the very um, useful technique when you see a syndesmosis joint question. Whenever you read the word interosseous tissue, interosseous membrane, know that this is a syndesmosis joint immediately. Whenever you get in the exam, what is the type of joint found in interosseous membrane of radius and ulna? You guys remember the radius and ulna? Dr. Safan explained it yesterday. Immediately, it's syndesmosis joint, okay? So here's the other characteristic about it. This is the most mobile and the most movable type of fibrous tissue. The examples are two. Uh, yes, question. Uh, is the mandible principle of moving the bone? I'm sorry? The mandible principle of moving the The mandible. Uh, yeah, you can move it, obviously. Well, uh, f free movement, and you will see this in synovial, I believe. But the one thing about the mandible, which you will see about gomphosis joint in the teeth, which is why I was pointing out right here, you will see it right now. I will discuss it with further detail right after syndesmosis, actually. So let's move on. As I was saying, you only have two examples. I don't want to make it hard for you. And in al Faisal, when you start your year, they will give you these two most common examples. Between the radius and ulna, where? In the interosseous membrane, interosseous tissue, yes in the interosseous tissue, and same thing in the lower limb. So let's just revise the arm really quick. You have a very long, uh, big bone in here called humerus. Two bones in here, radius and ulna. Carpals, metacarpals, and in your digits, you have phalanges, okay? Now, same thing for the lower limb. You also have one big bone here and two uh, long bones as well. So the long bone here is called femur. It's actually the longest bone in all of our bodies. This is a general info that you must know if somebody asks you, you don't want to look bad. Um, and two long bones in here, just like we have two long bones in our forearm. And it's called the tibia and the fibula. So uh, the example is found in the tibia and the fibula um, on the inferior aspect mainly, uh, as you can see in the following image. If you don't know the following image, this is tibia right here medially. And laterally, away from the midline, is the fibula. Just like the radius is the most lateral. Remember, the radius is the most lateral according to anatomical position. Moving on. So, now we have discussed syndesmosis and sutures. Let's look into the last subtype, which is gomphosis joint. So, the gomphosis fibrous joint, this is why I was pointing at my teeth. It's between of the tooth and the alveolar process of the jaw. When you look at this image, you will see lots of names right here. I do not want you to memorize these names or know them. I just want you to look at, to memorize the root of the tooth and the alveolar process of the jaw. This is all I want you to know. The rest were not in dentistry school, so um, here's a question for you. When do we see movement in this specific type of joint? In what case? Yes, you, sir. Uh, okay, okay, that's true. But in Al-Faisal, they, they have other things. But that's right. There's another, there's another case. 
with the other case, please, the female doctors. Anybody? Female doctors? No answer from the females. Jump, somebody just answered. You can answer. It's okay. Wisdom teeth, but as well as... Okay, when do we go to the dentist? Exactly. So during when there is pathology. When there is pathology, when there is disease, there is movement in this joint. So when you get any type of question like that, you see in Al-Faisal, your doctors will show you that immediately during pathology. Okay? Now, uh, this is actually the second most mobile... Um, um, yes, uh, fibrous joint. I do not want you to know this information, but I want you to know what's the most mobile fibrous joint. Uh, female doctors, what's the most mobile fibrous joint? Yes, syndesmos is correct. Okay, so now we have finished the fibrous joints, which are classified functionally as sign arthrosis, meaning no mo mo no um, movement at, <coughs> at all. Sorry. Now we're going to go into the cartilaginous joints. Any question about fibrous joints? Any questions? Yes. Oh, femur. Femur. It's in your leg right here. Okay? The femur. It's longest bone in the human body. Second longest one, I, I bet it's, uh, I believe, sorry, it's a uh, humerus. But the longest is femur. Uh, now, cartilaginous joints, the second uh, type of joints. Cartilaginous joints, from its name, the definition is a type of joint that is joined by cartilage, correct? Functionally, they are amphiarthrosis, slightly movable, okay? Now, this histologic image is just of cartilage, highline cartilage, I believe, because it's bluish gray, I believe. So, anyway, it has two subtypes. Now, here's a trick to memorize them because very, they're very easy to memorize. The first type is called primary because it's the number one. So second one is going to be called secondary, very easily. Unfortunately though, again, we have medical terms for them. You also have to know them because the doctor wants to make it only hard for you, unfortunately, in the exam. So the medical term is synchondrosis and the secondary one is called symphysis. You will see, I'll try to make it, there's some technique for both of them uh, to make it easier, but it's okay. With practice, makes it perfect. So let's look, take a look into each subtype. So the primary cartilage is synchondrosis, okay? Um, they are joined by, have you took cartilage? Yes. In histology? Yes. Okay. Uh, for the males, what are the types of cartilage? Can anybody help me? You didn't take cartilage? You didn't take cartilage? Females? <laughs> Throw me under the bus. Uh, <laughs> okay. So cartilage, for those of you who don't know, it's okay. It is a uh, specific type of connective tissue. Yesterday you took uh, um, types of tissue, there is connective tissue. So it's a specific type of connective tissue that is avascular. Anybody know what avascular means? No vascularity, because whenever you see the letter A with something, it means no. So asymptomatic patient, patient with no symptoms. Yes, so avascularity, no, uh, avascular, no vascularity, meaning no capillary supply. And Dr. Safwan yesterday explained capillaries for you, for those of you who don't know. So. Uh, the types of cartilage, they are three. Highline, fibro, and elastic, correct. So when we talk about joints, we're only focusing on two. So the first one, it's, it's uh, formed of and joined by highline cartilage. And the second one is fibro. Okay, so this type of joint, the synchondrosis primary cartilaginous joint, it's joined by highline cartilage. Highline cartilage, male doctors. <laughs> Uh, okay, so the examples that I want you to know in here is the articulation between the first rib and the sternum. You will see highline cartilage and you will see synchondrosis joint and also the epiphyseal plate that is found in children because the epiphyseal plate itself is formed of highline cartilage. And the one characteristic that you must know about highline cartilage between fibrocartilage, elastic cartilage, highline cartilage is the only type of cartilage that ossifies with age. Elastic does not. Fibro does not. Can any of the male doctors now remind me of a joint that we just took ossifies with age? Yes, doctor. Sutures, correct. And this is the second one now. Cartagenous primary cartilage is also known as synchondrosis. Moving on to the next one. Any questions? Okay, great. Second one is called secondary cartilage, also known as symphysis. Here's an easy way to remember the medical term symphysis because the example is this is the hip joint and this is the pubic symphysis of the pelvis. 
So secondary cartilation is joint. The first example that comes to mind is the pubic symphysis of the pelvis. And the second example that we have in here, you're looking at the vertebral column. So intervertebral disc, because the intervertebral disc itself is formed of fibrocartilage. So in here, secondary cartilaginous is joints. They are joined by fibrocartilage. Thank you. So we have also spoke that highline cartilage is the only type of cartilage that ossifies with age. So obviously, fibrocartilage does not. So now we have finished the two types, the fibrous and cartilaginous. We only have the synovial left. Any questions so far, please? Feel free to ask. Yes, yes, doctor. Uh, what's the meaning of ossify? Oh, ossify, yaltahim, fuse. Uh, they're not going to become mobile anymore. Okay? Uh, other questions? Okay. So, I actually put a break in here. Um, but if you want to continue, because it's actually a really easy lecture, as you can see. Sure? Okay. Um, you know what? For those of you who want to drink water, drink water. I'll, I'll give you two minutes. Just don't go out. In fact, you know what? I'll, I'll tell you. A uh, little story that every medical student, I believe, should, should know. And, I, and my professor told me about this story. I'm just going to share it. It's a quick one-minute story. Um, it's, what, it's, it's about how we should be good doctors. So there's, there's this guy called Mike, okay? Mike sh suffered from major depressive disorder, depression, okay? And Mike just wanted to end it all. He was ready to kill himself. So that escalated quickly from a cat to my, uh, suicide. Okay, uh, so here's the thing. So he wanted to kill himself, and he didn't just like wanna, you know, because there's a lot of suicide attempts and they get res rescued. So he wanted to make sure that he actually dies. So he went to one of these huge bridges. If you went to the US, like Illinois, they have this huge bridge and underneath it, like an ocean or a sea. So he goes to one of them and stands on the edge. And, uh, he is carrying a rope, puts the rope on the bridge, and the other side on his neck so he can hang himself. He also wanted to make sure he dies, right? So he also is carrying a gun on one hand so he can shoot himself. With the other hand, he's carrying, uh, you know, the thing that you light a fire with so that he can put himself on fire, so that he can hang himself, shoot himself in the head, and light himself on fire, and his ashes would go into the ocean. Nobody can find them. Nobody can help them. Nobody knows. So... Here's what happens to Mike. Mike lights himself on fire, jumps while jumping, shoots the gun, tilts his head a bit so the gunshot hits the rope, cuts the rope. He couldn't hang himself, he couldn't shoot himself. Now he, where does he fall? In the ocean. So the fire is gone. Still he can drown, but there was a rescue boat and it rescued him. Now, here's the, here's the trick. Um, two hours later, after the rescue boat and he's in the hospital, he was uh, dead. How did he die? Anybody know? Bleeding. Bleeding. Okay, good answer. Other? Uh -uh. Internal bleeding. Okay. Actually, what happened was, yes, he tried to kill himself. Uh, shot. No, it's too much drama. Uh, um, what happened is when he was in the hospital, the doctor that was responsible for him, because he was in a coma, the doctor switched up the drugs. It was like, I can't remember the drugs from med school. So uh, switched up the drugs and he killed him. So the guy who tried to kill himself in every way, the place that you're supposed to be safe in, he actually died. And this is why I believe every medical student should hear this story because we want not just to be doctors and to study for the exam, but to be good doctors. And nowadays you see a lot of doctors and you have to stand out. Anyway, that was a nice two minutes break. So now we're going to go into synovial joints, okay? Bismillah. <clears throat> synovial joints, from its name, it is the type of joint that is joined by synovial fluid. And functionally, they are freely movable, diarthrosis. Okay, so uh, synovial joints, there is a general rule if to ensure understanding for all of you when you talk about any s joint, I want you to know that this is synovial or not. So, and it's the following. This is the hardest slide, so please focus. We have seven primary rules and one that is not so, you know, present in every synovial joint. And they are the following. Number one, 
for any joint, we said the definition of a joint is point, uh, connection between two bones or more. So we must have two bones or more articulating as seen in the following image. The second rule is two bones have articulated, we should cover them. So we cover them with high line cartilage as seen in the following image. Two bones or more articulating, cover them with high line cartilage. Now give them space. We call this space joint cavity. Okay. Now we have a cavity, but it's empty. So what do we fill it with from its name? Synovia. So synovial fluid synovial fluid and synovial fluid is important because it uh, it prevents friction between bones so we fill it with synovial fluid and then we have to also cover it because it's exposed so we cover it with another cartilage called uh, synovial membrane and it's a cartilage but we it's it's a membrane cartilage so yeah so the, as seen in the following image we then have to cover this cartilage or this membrane what do we cover it with a capsule yes so you can also call it synovial capsule so let's again revise them yes a lot of information but you can actually correlate between the this information look into it two bones or more articulating cover them with high line cartilage give it space fill the space with synovial fluid cover the space with a mem synovial membrane cover the synovial membrane with a synovial capsule capsule does not need to be covered but it does need assistance and yesterday dr safan explained structures that assist in your human body can anybody ligaments or tendons yes in this case it's bone with bone so ligament so we assist the capsule with a ligament and that's it this is the general rule for any synovial joint now the eighth rule which is present in some synovial joints and some not really is the presence of interarticular cartilage what is interarticular cartilage so when I say inter, it means between. This is why I said intervertebral. Between each vertebra, there's a disc present. So interarticular, we know what articulating means. And cartilage, we know what cartilage is. Now, why is it present in some and some not? Because it, you know, in your elbow, you don't have that. But in your knee, you have it. What do you have in knee? What's the interarticular cartilage in the knee? Does anybody know? Menisci, correct? Correct, menisci. Uh, menisci, C-shaped fibrocartilage also. Anyway, um, and that's it. That's the general rule for any synovial joint. Now let's get into its subtypes. And that's the last thing we're going to be talking about. You can, all, you can talk about them according to shape. They are six. Plane, saddle, hinge, pivot, ball socket, and ellipsoid. Also call it condyloid. Same meaning. Uh, this is according to shape. Uh, so I don't know how to explain it for you. For example, if you don't know what ball and socket is, just uh, the humerus head is like ball shape. And it goes into the scapula and the clavicle, which is like a socket. So uh, that's according to shape. For those of you who don't know what saddle shape is, you know the saddle that you put in a horse, in a camel? That's saddle for those of you you put it in, on a pig. And you know what I'm talking about which video game uh, moving on uh, types of synovial joints according to we said shape so now we will talk about them according to movement so synovial joints according to movement they are either non-axial uniaxial can anybody continue now biaxial not triaxial multi or polyaxial yes and from its name each one so non-axial is plane in no uh, plane movement uh, the uniaxial in one plane so, for example, flexion and extension. Biaxial, flexion and extension, as well as side-by-side -side movement, like medial rotation, lateral rotation. Yes, sir? Uh, how can it be a non-axial uh, when it's a synovial joint? Uh, it's synovial joint. It's just, it's just plane. It does not move in any plane. It moves, but like on, not on any plane, if that makes any sense. I don't know. Not yet. Okay. Well, uh, anybody can help me out also? Yeah, that's the example. So it, oh, okay. So it gives it a sliding or gliding movement. Okay. So that's what I want you to know in here. The uniaxial, like we said, like flexion, extension, forward and backward. Forward, backward, as well as side by side. The polyaxial or multiaxial with also rotation. So circumduction, we call it. Now, let's get into, we have looked by shape and by movement. Let's correlate the two points. So plane, non-axial, also um, it is by shape plane and the example is like the lady doctor have said the carpal bones and the carpal bones this joint gives it sliding a uh, slipping or uh, gliding movement not sliding sorry my mistake okay um, like we said between the carpals 
or the tarsals. For those of you who don't know what tarsals are, they are found at your feet. We said the upper limb is low and lower limb are just very similar. So now let's look into the uniaxial. They are two, hinge and pivot. Now with the hinge, we have two examples. The elbow joint as well as the interphalangeal joint. So elbow, everybody knows the elbow, interphalangeal. What does it mean? Let's go back to the arm. Humerus, radius ulna, carpals, metacarpals, phalanges. Look at your phalanges, your fingers, your digits, okay? All your phalanges are divided into three. Look into them. Distal phalange, middle phalange, and proximal phalange, which is your, the closest phalange. All your fingers, except one. Anybody knows which one? The thumb, correct. It's distal phalange and proximal phalange only. Okay? So, that's what interphalangeal joint. Between distal phalange and middle phalange. Between middle phalange and proximal phalange. That's the joint between them. And the elbow joint, as we know. The pivot, we have two also examples. Superior radio ulnar joint. That's why I said, uh, anybody remembers the interosseous membrane between radius and ulna? Fibrous. But what, which subtype? Syndesmosis, correct. But proximally, on the superior aspect and not on the interosseous membrane, it is synovial pivot. I believe you had a question? Did you, it's okay, you can ask a question. You and a green shirt doctor, yes? You doctor. No, okay. Um, the other example is the atlantoaxial joint. What is atlantoaxial? Okay, very simple. You have, yes, two bones. You have two bones in here and they are in your cervical area. Cervical means related to the cervix. Cervix is neck, okay? Just like the cervix in uh, women, uh, which is found in their uterus. So now, the cervical area in C1 and C2, the first cervical area and the second one. The first one is called atlas, atlas bone. Second one is called axis bone, yes. So between the two of them, the joint is synovial pivot, yes. And now we have finished the uniaxial, so now the biaxial. Condyloid or ellipsoid as well as saddle shape. So the saddle shape example is carpometacarpal joint of the thumb. And this is the only example for saddle joint in all your body. The carpometacarpal joint of the thumb. Where is the carpometacarpal joint? Again, look at your hand. Carpals, metacarpals, phalanges. So between the carpals, uh, carpals in here in the rest, and the metacarpals, okay? Between the carpals and the metacarpals, we call it carpometacarpal joint of the thumb. And the ellipsoid or condyloid, it is metacarpophalangeal joint, also known as MCP, to make it easier for you to memorize. And the uh, interphalangeal, you can call it IP. And you will see these monomics in the hospital more, <coughs> clinically. Now, the condyloid, metacarpophalangeal joint, so what is metacarpophalangeal joint? Between the metacarpal and the phalange. Okay? Carpal, metacarpal, phalange. So, and, uh, and uh, that's it, I believe. Yeah, and the rest. These are the ellipsoid or condyloid joints examples. Any questions so far? Okay, no. Now, that's it. We have discussed the uniaxial, we have discussed the biaxial, and now we uh, only have the multiaxial. And the only example of this is it is ball and socket, so the only examples are the hip, uh, sorry, the hip and the shoulder joint, okay? Because ball and socket. The ball is in the humerus, head of the humerus, and the ball in the femur is the head of the femur. When you look at the femur, you will see it has a large head, and you will see the neck very clearly. So, that will be actually discussed in the lab. I have questions for you to ensure understanding that everybody in here understood everything. Before I get into them, do you have any questions for me? No. Men? No. Females? No. Okay. Yeah, yes, doctor. Sorry, I didn't see. What's uh, synovial? Synovial, which one? Uh, synovial. Even in Arabic, uh, synovial. Uh, translate it, I don't know. Because even the fluid, synovial fluid, synovial fluid. Uh, anybody can help? Yeah, the translation, even in Arabic. Synovial. <laughs> uh, look at in Google. Maybe it'll help you. I'm sorry, I couldn't answer that question. Yeah, 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 that's the fluid. It's a viscous, wide fluid. You know, viscous. That's the meaning of the word. You think? Uh, okay. M maybe viscous. Well, let's you know make sure. So, uh, any other questions that don't involve translation? Just the actual points. Okay. 
Okay, so let's get into the questions to ensure understanding. So the question is, uh, what is the type of the following joint? And the first joint is males. Uh, no, by raising of hand, please. Yes, doctor. Fibrous, which subtype? Gomphosis, 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 fibrous joint, correct. The second one, female doctors. You're looking at an x-ray of the hip joint. So this is? No, 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 no. Uh, please, raising with hands also. Please, kindly. Yes, doctor. It's not ball and socket. It's not synovial at all. Let's put it this way. Yes, doctor. You're correct. Please, I have said the, te the technique to memorize secondary cartilaginous joint medical term symphysis is because the example is the pubic symphysis of the pelvis. And I said this is the hip joint, just like there. So this is an, maybe because it's an x-ray, it's okay. So now this is the last question and it's also an x-ray of the hand. Um, and let's start with the male doctors. Number one, who can answer it? And who can tell me what it is first? And then who can answer it? Yes, doctor. Synovial. Uh, which synovial? According to shape, we always talk about shape. So movement, don't tell me. Uh, yes, doctor. Yes, carpal metacarpal joint of which finger? The thumb. But uh, th that's what you're looking at, correct? So the question is, what is the type? He said synovial. What subtype of synovial according to shape? Saddle. Saddle. I said saddle example is only one in all your body. It's the carpal metacarpal joint of the thumb. Okay, number two, female doctors. Okay, let me help you out a bit. So, look, these are your, always, always identify and do not start distally, start proximally. So, this is the radius, because he's doing like this, so this is the radius, most lateral. Okay, ulna, carpals, metacarpals, and then phalange, 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 proximal phalange. So, between the metacarpal and the phalange. I also said this is MCP, yes. Metacarpophalangeal joint, correct? And the metacarpophalangeal joint is? Hinge. Not hinge. It's not saddle. The saddle is only one example. Not pivot. Condyloid or ellipsoid? Condyloid or ellipsoid? You can call it both names. Metacarpophalangeal joint. Okay? MCP. Here it is. Last one. Males. Please, uh, number three, who can help me? Between phalange and the phalange. Mid this is proximal phalange, this is middle phalange. Yes, doctor. Uh, Interphalangeal joint. joint, correct? It's a hinge joint. It's a hinge joint, correct. Synovial hinge. When, please, when you write in the exam, because in the OSPI and SAQs, you will write it. The doctor won't accept like hinge or just write hinge slash synovial. So he knows the subtype and the type. Uh, but that's it. Great job, everybody. I'm, I'm glad that you could answer the questions. Thank you for everything. And my references uh, are Dr. Hassan's lecture and Morse anatomy book. Anatomy books do not change information. Whatever addition you have, they don't change the information. This is the last slide that we can actually play with. Thank you. Thank you. Um, don't try to move this picture or Otherwise, I'm not responsible for whatever is behind. But I, I believe that students should have fun and also study. So I put a little something there. Uh, don't tell your partner what this background also is, if you know it. And thank you.